What lessons or probably why, what is your relationship with President Mwai Kibaki? President Mwai Kibaki, the late President Mwai Kibaki, was a mentor to me. I studied economics because of him. I, tried to, I studied his life from the time he was in Mangu High School going to Makerere. I read his memoirs. I interacted with him. I met him and really got to interact with him when he was president, when I chaired the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, when I chaired the Petroleum Institute of East Africa, when I was a student leader at University of Nairobi studying economics as president of ISEC, the International Association of Students Interested in Economics and Business Management. And I interacted with him also because I belonged to his party as a young Democrat. Uh, he used to tell us with a fist. I remember him for being a politician and a leader who enlightened, who believed in light, not heat. Many of people in politics today like to generate heat, uh, but Kibaki generated light. And even as we escort him, as we give him a dignified send-off, uh, he's enlightening. And I came early morning today because Kibaki re always reminded us about the freshness of the morning. I wanted to be fresh. I wanted to come and pay respect to Mzee Wetu, Raisi Wetu, Kiongozi Wetu. And um, I want to in particular pay my respects to his children, who also happen to be dear friends. I got to know them as I got to know President Kibaki. That is Judy, David Kagai, Jimmy, and Tony. And uh, tell them, may God give you the peace and strength to accept his will for Mze Kibaki. And for those of us who are being left behind, I think we have a big challenge to rise up to his game. He was big shoes to become the giant that he became. And uh, in a very particular way, perhaps for me, I won my ticket for the Jubilee gubernatorial seat or the Azimiola Omoja ticket. I was pronounced on the steps of KICC. A few minutes that is a poignant moment for me. And I thank God for his sense of humor. You, you I, remember, see I will remember that uh, the day Kibaki left, I came. And I, I will continue to walk in issues. You say that you studied economics because of him. What is in particular about his economics did you like and uh, probably how has it impacted in your life? I think, number one, he was a demand-side economist. He, believed, he did, did not believe in the supply side of things as much as the demand side. He first of all said, let's create demand for goods and services. So you remember banks were hawking loans on the streets of Nairobi. There's no need, okay, there's a need for bridges, for roads, for houses, for hotels, for this infrastructure we are building. But who will use it if they don't have money in their pocket? So you've got to, st first of all, get people to have money in their pockets. Then you bring infrastructure and then you take off. So Pesam Fukoni, Pesam Kononi, Kisha, Myundom Singi, infrastructure, roads, uh, and he, he started, he was an addict of roads. Kibaki was also an addict of peace. He was the first one to do a handshake uh, with my presidential candidate, Raila Odinga. Um, and he was calm, cool, and collected man. And I hope I can emulate some, uh, a lot of what, what he has done. So what I really love was his balance of the demand side and the supply side. Sometimes we get excited too much about the supply side. So we, we create a lot of big infrastructure that's very underutilized. Gra he was not a grandiosity man. He's, he was not grandiose. He was into practical, simple solutions. And he also, like Pope Francis, did not like gossip. He believed gossip was a curse, is, a, is terrorism. He didn't have time for gossip. And I think if there's anything else, apart from lack of leadership that eats us in Kenya, it's gossip. Well, gossip, gossip and bad politics. Yeah. Well, there's the question, that is the generality and that is the economics that you loved about him. But what are some of the instances, probably on a personal one-on-one -on -one level, that you could remember with uh, the president, if at all you ever met him? Yes, indeed. Uh, I remember when I took over and I was inducted as, inaugurated as chairman of Kenya Association of Manufacturers. In fact, I saw the photo yesterday. He was at Itna Continental. And by his speech, make widgets, continue to do value addition, use local materials, employ, create jobs. You are the people who create jobs as we create laws and policies. I also interacted with him for a long time. We spent a really good afternoon after, when he was retired, when he came to Starehe Boys Center. I was uh, one of the guests. The chief guest on that day was Dr. James Mwangi, 
uh, was a chief guest during the Founders Day of Starehe. And I spent the afternoon uh, having a meal and chatting with President Kibaki, who gave me the history of Nairobi, uh, especially during independence and how Starehe Boys Center came to be. And the role they played with Tom Boyer, the role they played with Charles Njonjo, uh, and those type of people. He was a real wonderful historian, and, and he loved people who could listen. And um, I will never, I will always, Kenya will never be the same again, because President Mwai Kibaki was once our president. Well, there is the other question that probably might come, and uh, you, <laughs> you are talking about how he has impacted the country and the economics, and basically even going ahead to say that Kenya will never be the same. How will that probably change if, or how will that impact if in the eventuality you are able to be The reason why I glorify Kibaki, President Kibaki as, and saying Kenya will never be the same again, the internet we enjoy today that has created the biggest digital economy is courtesy of Kibaki. And then he was being criticized as somebody who was and to let the internet and you to download my picture faster makwanini. People are trivializing Sims and Teams. His, during his tenure, MPESA came and he enabled uh, Safaricom. During his tenure, banks were on the street literally the way I am, s selling loans. For the first time, I went to a bank and borrowed money with my pay slip. And they told me, because you work for breweries, I was working for East African breweries, we can use your pay slip and give you a 36 months loan. That is how I bought my first house. I used, otherwise, I used to borrow from circles. Uh, and I know, and he also made local banks become bigger than international banks, uh, Kibaki. He also revolutionized our pension schemes at less than 100, uh, it was just a couple of billion shillings in pension scheme savings. With Mueraria, today we have a trillion. Uh, so the pension scheme revolution uh, was Kibaki's revolution. People, uh, then he also brought Vision 2030, that we politicians should character and integrity. We should just prove Chapter 6. An election should be about presenting social pillar, economic pillar. And we should never veer away from big four which is a subcomponent of Vision 2030, and I'm very sure Kenyans watching us at home will give Raila Molo Odinga the ticket. So he continues, because he's the man who has done a handshake with Mwai Kibaki, a handshake, and hug him as our president on, Ju on August 9th. Well that you were born with a silver spoon. Everything you touch, probably even sometimes you're even being called for a job like Nairobi. What did you say about that? The people of Nairobi have called me endorsed me to have the ticket, I thank them. I also thank God Almighty for making me lucky. I've, all I have had is luck. Uh, um, I went, I used to live in Majengo in Roiro. Uh, I went to a nursery school in Roiro. I went to Athi River Primary School. I was head boy in Makadara, Athi River Primary School. I played Bano and Juala like the rest of you. Uh, I played Tapo, Shake, those things. Yeah? I went for I know, I know how to, I, I, I started dating, the dating scene in Nairobi and I used to have 50 shillings in my pocket. All right. Uh, the Nairobi gubernatorial aspirant under the Jubilee ticket, Polly Gap Gather, they are saying uh, he has been very lucky indeed and saying uh, Kibaki generated light, not heat. All right. That concludes our special coverage this morning on uh, Mwai Kibaki's final journey. Uh, do join the Kiswahili team on NTV Sasa at noon. They continue and I will hand over the reins to Frida Mwaka then. Before then, do enjoy the rest of your viewing. I've been your host on this hour, Olive Burrows.